Hi, very good morning to you. It's Jim from Avstar. Um, I just wanted to say a big thank you uh, to those few people that have been helping over the last few months. You know, just like everyone now around the world, you know, everyone is feeling the financial crisis and the pinch on the purse strings. But, you know, it is um, always appreciated. Even though we haven't raised a particularly a lot of money uh, the whole year, it's been dismal. Um, certainly nothing like it was before October last year. If we go on this chart to October, you know, I don't find it any coincidence that, you know, since then, you know, the dollar has took a dive. And at the same time, you know, the level of support dropped off as well. It's because people are skinned. You know, not everyone can afford, you know, to chip in a few bucks, especially for the luxury of an observatory like ours, even though we are the only one. Um, but, you know, I am always grateful and, uh, you know, at the beginning of most videos or even at the end, you know, I always thank people for sticking in there with us and keeping us going. And uh, I know, I just want to say, guys, I know things are hard. Um, we're looking at the, uh, you know, the exchange rate for the dollar to the pound. And um, we was talking about the national debt of the United States. And... You know, looking at the GDP uh, compared to the level of debt, you know, in November when the elections are, you know, uh, fought over, you know, at, at some point there will either be, uh, you know, uh, Candelice, is it, uh, or Donald Trump in power. I think it's more likely to be Donald Trump. But the thing here is what I'm going to say is, you know, if he wants to continue with any of the projects that he had going four years ago when he was president, like, you know, building that wall down on the south border, you know, he has got to borrow money in order to do that. Because if you look at the GDP, the money is just not there to do that without sacrificing something that is uh, the money is being spent on currently, either the military or, you know, the uh, health care or, you know, um, benefits. You know, you know, he's got to sacrifice one of those, and we know it's not going to do it. He's going to borrow more money. The thing is, I don't know um, how long the United States can continue printing up their dollars, especially when there's so much coming back to the U.S. from all the other countries. Because by now, all the other countries have seen the balance sheets of the United States, and it doesn't look good. And this has been a trend now that's been going on for 23 years. That's right. 24 years ago, on the 24th year, if we go back, it was the last time that the GDP was not uh, overridden by the debt, the national debt. So that was the last time they was able to collect enough money in order to keep it in the green. And, of course, you know, that would have allowed the government back then, nearly two decades ago, well, over two decades ago, to possibly spend money on other things like you know infrastructure bridges roads maybe you know giving people a little bit more benefits or putting more money into the healthcare system so you know it's not a good looking future for the united states and you know what was shocking is when i looked at um the total debt so you know the 35 point uh, 35 and a quarter trillion is the uh, government's debt. If you look at how much total debt, which includes everybody's mortgages, credit cards and everything else, it's 101 trillion. That's more than three times the GDP. And just to give you an idea, I watched it this morning, the debt clock, and timed it. Every 30 seconds, another million pound gets added to that debt. It's, it's unimaginable, isn't it? So you work it out. Every minute, there's two million pound added to that debt. And if you want to find out how much it is an hour, you just times it by two, uh, sorry, by 60. 60 uh, seconds, sorry, 60 minutes in the hour. So times one minute uh, by 120, well, it works out 120 million pound an hour. I'll just say it. 120 million pounds added to the US debt every single hour. This money cannot be paid back by the United States without 
dramatic cuts to bring the GDP, sorry, to bring the national debt under the GDP. Because right now, just like England, America, and a lot of other countries, by the way, are insolvent. Because our borrowing is over our GDP, but by no means as much as it is in America. And uh, by absolutely no means uh, worse than Japan. So, you know, the world is suffering. The whole world is suffering. This economic downturn. And, you know, you can see by looking at this, just over the last week, the dollar dropped off the cliff. I think it might recover. I think, you know, the Fed will step in and probably print up a few more pounds and inject it into the markets, you know, which will, you know, make that look a little bit better. But inevitably, the dollar is going to crash. And with it, house prices in the States will crash. And, you know, someone said to me, Gene, you know, it's real hard now at the moment with the cost of renting, you know, being at, you know, minimum $1,500 a month to, you know, nearly $2,000 a month with the fact, that, you know, some people are on very low salaries and it probably just about covers the rent if that, you know, it's no wonder I hear about a lot of people buying small camper vans and living in those in order to bank the money whilst being in this recession that we're all in and you know obviously they'll be saving themselves at least fifteen hundred dollars a month by staying in a camper van and finding free spots to live but the, the thing is if you live in california or florida you'll already know that there's thousands of people in these camper vans lining the coastlines doing the exact same thing but you can't blame them you know, it's not a crime to live in a camper van. It's a way of, it's becoming a way of life. There's so much of our world is changing right now, not just climatically, but, you know, just the way in which we all have to make ends meet. And we know that it doesn't make any difference who gets in power and runs the countries because they don't listen anymore to the general public. They absolutely pay no attention to the public even more so if even if you can't talk to them directly and get them to listen to what you know some of the issues you feel are you know at critical levels and that need addressing even if they don't listen to you and you start setting up a little group on one of the social media websites they will do you for you know talking you know and um you know uh, they'll, they'll like they have done over here recently in the uk you know, arrested people for protesting. Now, okay, some of these people were violently uh, protesting, throwing bricks at police officers, you know, smashing shops and trying to burn down hotels where the refugees were staying. You know, that's totally wrong in my opinion, but, you know, this is what was happening. And, um, you know, the thing is, I, I mean, this was supposed to, supposedly about those poor three girls that was stabbed and killed and you know several injured as well but I think it was the public uh, venting off uh, also and that that was just the precursor to do that so you know I think that you know there's a lot of tension around at the moment and it's very easy to get flashpoints um, over certain subjects uh, but I think what it is is it's generally the cost of living and the crisis that everybody's facing and you know, it does make you angry you know you see road rage uh, flare up at hardly anything now because what a guy in front of you or a lady in front of you forgot to put the indicator on and you got upset about it and then next minute the guy behind is screaming like a maniac in his car at him you know yeah I, I understand you know the crisis that you're in but you know it's something that we were all in and you know we need to be a little bit more proactive on this you know we need to act i know that a lot of people think well what's the point they don't listen but you know we've got to make them listen they work for us they're our public servants you know they, let's get it right we're not their servants they serve us and that needs to be reconstituted so that these 
MPs and politicians understand that they are the servant, not us, as it is the case right now. The other thing is, is what, what really upsets me is the levels of um, attack now on freedoms. So sad to see, you know, a behaviour that was eradicated in 1930s by the Nazis, I'm talking about, to see it come back in, you know, this modern day and age. And you remember this one thing is that first they went out for freedoms of information, the right to exchange ideas. You can see that now happening all over the um, uh, social media sites. I've got to say, you know, I got a warning for a video I'd done over a year ago the other day. Again, it's like they, as soon as the warning period ends and the warning's removed, they put another one on there. It's just to keep you on um, um, self-regulating yourself, uh, self-censoring yourself because you're always that one step away from losing your channel. And um, I, I saw a guy who was a homesteader and he just managed to talk about one subject and uh, he got a warning and also lost his right for uh, ad revenue. And he was talking about it on his channel that you know he, he, him and his family depended on that money. You know, he'd give up his job, moved on to his homestead and that was, pretty much his only form of income and you know even though he'd appealed it they rejected it so you know this is what's going on through just talking they will go after your salaries it's not just um, advert revenues it's other means that they attack now it's clear we saw just in Trudeau's go after the truckers bank accounts and not only that he put them in jail as well and that's not fair you know, if we all stand together, we can deal with, you can, we can rectify this problem. But if we all stay, um, you know, each to our own, then we'll get taken down one by one and it'd be very easy. It's not so easy to take down 100,000 or 200,000 or a million people. I mean, Gerald Salenti um, is trying to get a peace rally going and he's trying to raise, you know, get the attention of a million people to turn up to this rally on the 20. 8th of September I think it is don't quote me on that I think it is the 28th of September um, but I've got a feeling he's not going to achieve it you know Scott Ritter's going to be there uh, Judge Andrew Napolitano is going to be there I hope I haven't butchered his name and of course Gerald Salenti is going to be there there's going to be some music there's going to be like a festival feeling to this um, peace march but you know people have to show that they care and you know turn up i mean i'm i'm never going to be able to get over to the united states just way too far i haven't got the money lots of other reasons but i would if i could if i had the means i would so and it'd be nice uh probably to bump into a few of you guys over there as well but i always have i've got to say this i always have a feeling because of my um controversial uh views that you know i've always worried that if ever i got off the plane in the united states I would probably be arrested for you know summer I just I just get that feeling and I get that feeling about going to Canada as well you know that as soon as I got off that plane for some reason they would arrest me and that is something they did to uh, Tommy Robinson you know as soon as he got off the plane in Canada they arrested him why because he's an organizer organizer of protests over here in the UK and here's another thing as well. I mean, did you see what they did to Andrew Tate again? You know, come up with some stupid charges once again and arrested him and his brother. And, you know, the thing is, is that they use the sickest form of allegation, in this case, trafficking of young women. You know, they use the sickest, hideous, most disgusting allegations and then they arrest you and these things hang over your head until they actually get dealt with in court so Andrew you know um, Tate and his brother are now I believe on house lockdown again so they can't go out their property and they certainly can't leave the country and I know that they've had a lot of assets um, seized and of course now the UK want Andrew Tate for 
you know, his part in those uh, protests that have been taking place for over the last few weeks. And uh, I guarantee you, if he was to step off the plane in the UK, he would be immediately arrested and brought before a judge, rapid, and put in jail over here. So, you know, just, I know Andrew Tate's never going to listen to this show, but, um, you know, if he does, or if somebody, you know, that is listening to this, he needs to be warned as soon as he gets off the plane in the UK, he will be arrested. And not just for, um, you know, uh, tax evasion because he openly admitted tax evasion on one of his videos, which wasn't a very good thing because he almost, you know, snitched himself up there. But um, he'll not only be arrested for tax evasion, I believe that's what the police want him for. Uh, they also want him uh, in connection to, you know, the things he said. And, and I know what they're gonna say, he was stirring up trouble. Um, you know, we saw, um, that editor, uh, what's his name, give him a grilling over it, saying that you were the cause of that, and that 15 million people that watch you on your, you know, your web, um, you know, your web webinars that you do, uh, or your podcasts, uh, you had encouraged and incited people to behave the way they did, over lies. That's what the, that's what um, Pierce Morgan said. That's the editor I was talking about. But you know, this is the things that they do in order to silence people. I mean, look what they've done to uh, Jordan Peterson. They've removed his practicing license in psychology and pr pretty much disbarred him from the university where he, ta he taught. You know, it's just an absolute insane world. And these are criminals now that are running our country. They clearly are. And they don't serve the public like they're supposed to, they serve themselves. And that's why I say, if we don't put them in check, they just carry on as though they're allowed to. So, you know, I, I won't ramble on any here. You know, I think that there are important issues in your life as well as in mine. And if we don't talk about them, you know, some people will, will never feel the need to act and do something about it. So, you know, I'll end the video here. But I just want to say a big thank you to those that have chipped in a few bucks here and there to keep us going. And um, just mention, if I can briefly, the link in the description. Um, you know, it absolutely would be amazing to see a few more people, you know, step up and support what we do. The only other thing for me to do is, you know, as I always do, you know, just do your best. Take care of your family and your loved ones. As always, bye for now.